The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and today we are harvesting free energy. I'm not talking about that bogus free energy you find on the internet. I'm talking about real free energy. Do you mean solar power? No, I don't mean solar power. The sun will run out someday in the future and there's not much sunlight coming into this space. What I mean is energy somebody else has already paid for and you can use it. And in particular, I use the infinite source of your spouse being able to buy tons of these tea candles at every visit to the furniture store. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So we all know tea candles are useful for two things, filling up the cupboard and performing magic tricks. So today I want to harvest the burning power of the candles and turn that into electrical energy that I can use for some kind of project. Let's see how we can do that and how much power we can generate. This is a Peltier element. It's used to cool down parts in a lot of electrical installations. It's used in little appliances like little thermoelectric coolers. And this uses the Peltier effect, which turns electrical energy into a cooling force. Today, we do not want to use the Peltier effect to cool something down. No, we want to do the reverse of that. We use the Seebeck effect to turn a temperature differential into electrical energy. Let's take a look at some different Peltier elements and try them out so we can find the perfect Peltier element for our Seebeck effect application. Element 14 has sent me some Peltier elements. Tiny ones, mid-range ones and a bigger one. Let's see how they compare in their intended use when cooling stuff down. For comparison's sake, I've used the same heatsink on all these models to get comparable results. Quick note on Peltier elements, you can actually reverse the sides. So you can switch the hot and the cold side by switching the polarity at the inputs, but you should avoid that because it tends to break your Peltier element. So don't switch polarity that often. In these first tests, we can see that applying more voltage makes for a bigger cooling effect, but it also scales with the mass of your heat sinks. The hot side of the Peltier element definitely needs a heat sink at all times. So we have to dissipate the heat and the better that one performs, the better your cooling effect will be. In their intended use, they perform as expected. The tiny ones cool a little bit and the bigger ones consume much more power, but they also cool much more. So now use the Seebeck effect to generate power by applying heat to one side and cooling the other side. For comparison's sake, I'm again using the same heatsink and I'm heating up the Peltier elements with a heat gun you may know from a previous episode. So we heat up one side of the Peltier element, let the other one cool down with a giant big heatsink and compare the results we get by measuring the voltage. When I heat up the Peltier element's hot side with a heat gun, I can see the voltage slowly rising up and at a certain point it will peak and that's my maximum voltage output that I can get. So I compare all these and the results are a bit surprising. I expected the biggest Peltier element to perform the best like it did in cooling, but actually the second biggest, which has a much lower rating, it's like half the wattage of the big one, performed much better. It has a peak voltage about six volts and it's the only open design I have in my range. But at its peak performance, also the leads got desoldered because it got too hot. So I have to reattach them and seal it up with some epoxy. So I avoid that when doing my next test. I also want to note that I can also produce power by just putting my thumb on the hot side and having the cold side cooled with a big heat sink that also produces some voltage. Very little, but it does. So that may be an application for Peltier elements in wearable technology, using your own body warmth to create a tiny bit of power. 
The results reminded me of the performance of tiny solar panels I used back in the day for beam robots. These are tiny analog robots, very fun to build. And we always use these solar panels in conjunction with something called a solar engine, which is a basic circuit that collects the energy the solar panels produce, ramp that up to a given amount and then let the robot use it. If you try to hook up a circuit directly to the Peltier element, you will run into trouble. It can't sustain a decent amount of power. I tried hooking up a motor directly, which kinda wobbles, and I hooked up an LED directly, which glimps, but just for a short amount of time. But what we actually need is a way to collect all the energy and then let it out in a burst so the circuit that comes after that can actually use it. So to gain a usable amount of power, I have to collect them with some sort of circuitry, then put them to use. Let's try out some methods I know from back in the day, some solar engines from beam robots and some other ideas. You know when the XMPP protocol is used. Do you know the difference between an email address and a Jabber ID? Do you know what applications use XMPP? No! For the answers to these questions, go to Element 14 Tech Spotlight. So I tried out some designs, if they may work with a Peltier Element 2. But after soldering up a lot of circuits and trying them out, I found that they kinda work in some situations, but not always. And they mostly run out of power too quickly to really perform. And then I thought, hey, what about these step-up converter modules you can get online for very little money. They are used to step up the voltage of a LiPo cell to 5 volts to power a USB device with it. So let's try out that one connected to our circuit and see what it does. As expected, the tiny step-up module works. It boosts up the voltage to 5 volts, but in reality, the tiny LED on the board consumes so much current that there is basically nothing left to use on the other end. The moment you apply a load, the voltage breaks down. So we need to collect more energy until we have a usable amount. This is a capacitator. Mine has 1000 microfarads. That's the biggest one I have at hand. Let's try out if that will perform a bit better. And yes, it does, but only for a limited amount of time. 1000 microfarads isn't that much, but I have a lot of them. So let's gang up a lot of them in parallel, build a capacitor bank, collect more energy and try to power something with it. You can easily mod these servos into geared motors by snipping off the cables and resoldering them directly to the motor inputs. These geared motors now run as voltages as low as one volt. A very important notice on efficiency. This circuit is very inefficient and your output depends highly on your cooling. So the bigger the better the heatsink that's on the cool side of your device, the better it will perform. So I use a giant heat pipe induced CPU cooler to do that. You can also scale with mass. So a bigger, more heavy heatsink will also perform better than a tiny puny one. It basically scales with thermal mass. So keep that in mind when designing your circuit. This will be pretty heavy until you get a decent enough output. So Peltier elements, not that good for powering mobile applications, but you could also charge capacitors with it, unplug them and use these capacitors to power another thing. And if you use a LiPo charging module in conjunction with the circuitry, you could also charge batteries with a candle and use those batteries in other applications. You could even charge your phone with it, but it will take forever. And I mean forever, like in really, really, really long. To get a more consistent output, I have doubled up on the Peltier elements, so I've also used the second best performing one. Ganked up 14 of the 1000 microfarad capacitors in parallel, hooked them up to a motor, and now we need an application also is consistent with the tea candle theme. And I think these things should finally do something with tea, not just sitting around and smelling. So every time I want to make a cup of tea, I just put in my tea bag, which is made by my favorite brand, Element 4 Tea. 
and it just sits in there and there's always the infusion at the bottom and not at the top and that's not consistent. So I have to stir in there and move my tea bag around, which annoys me. So let's build a robot that does that for me. Of course, I will not waste precious batteries. I will use the tea candles that I have laying around the house. Ah. I've drawn up my design in Fusion 360 and exported STL files and SVG files. I need the SVG files for my laser cutter and the STL files are for your convenience. You can download them freely at the link in the description and make your own one. So no matter if you want to laser cut them, CNC them or 3D print them, all the files are provided. I have laser cut all these parts out of 4mm acrylic. You could also use wood or any other material or 3D print these, it doesn't matter. But keep in mind that you have to firmly isolate the heat sinks from the stands. I use Captain Tape in my first version, but later upgraded to a little wooden spacer. So keep in mind you have to avoid melting your device with your candle, it gets really hot. To put this all together I used some cyanoacrylate glue and also some two-part epoxy at the parts that get hot because cyanoacrylate actually breaks when heated up. A lot of machinists use that as a convenient trick to make super glue arbors. They can just break up afterwards with a little gentle heat. So all these parts together form a base, a stand for the candle and the Peltier elements assembly with all the big heat sinks. We also have a place to mount the capacitor bank to. The servo has a mounting place and the arm assembly with a crankshaft allows us to turn the rotational movement into vertical up and down movement. Just hang a tea bag onto there and put it in some hot water, light up the candle and here is our first test run. Simply start by igniting the candle, then it will take some time to heat up the Peltier element so the voltage will slowly rise and the capacitor bank will fill up. And the moment the capacitor bank is filled up, like just filled up, it will trigger its first time and the motor twitches a little bit. If you help it with your finger, you can make it move right now. But if you just wait for a little longer, it will start moving on its own. So it's time to put in the tea bag into the glass and let it do its work. After a few minutes, you can enjoy perfectly served tea made with the power of a tea candle to perfectly agitate it and mix it. I know the English tea gourmets will not like me for preparing my tea that way, but this is how we do it in the Alpine regions. Of course, I can think of more uses to use this thing than just dunking a tea bag. I could also think about letting it stir my container when I try to etch PCBs or just stir around in paint. Tea candles, finally a useful tool in the workshop. Today we have harnessed the power of an abundant source of energy that's pretty much forgotten, tea candles. Do you have any ideas for other alternative energy projects? Some solar powered things, some more candle powered things? Let us know on the community at element14.com forward slash presents. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.